Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. There's a lot of rumors about what Microsoft is going to announce at Mobile World Congress 2010. Uh, but one thing's for sure, they're likely to talk about an evolved version of Windows Mobile 6.5, really what 6.5 was supposed to be. People are calling it Windows Mobile 6.6, .6, or at least that's the rumor, and Microsoft will sort of brand it as the capacitive, uh, this capacitive supporting version of Windows Mobile for sort of lower end devices. And then it remains to be seen whether they're gonna talk about Windows Mobile 7. Our guess is that they will. There's rumors that there will be two versions of Windows Mobile 7, so a lot of different versions of Windows Mobile. In the past, we've shown you sort of this evolved version of Windows Mobile 6.5, which a lot of people have called 6.5.3. So what we wanted to do is take you through the latest, which is build 23518 from XDA developers, and show you sort of all of the things that have come together uh, to really make this different than Windows Mobile 6.5 that you would get on a Windows phone that you could buy in a store right now. So let's go through a few things. Okay, let's take a look at the start menu. So we're going to go to the button on the bottom here, and that's really the most noticeable difference about 6.5.3 or 6.6, .6, whatever you want to call it, compared to 6.5. All of the buttons reside on the bottom of the screen, making them more finger-friendly so you don't necessarily have to use a stylus. And they're very graphical, too. They're not necessarily text-based. For example, for lock, there's a lock icon, whereas in Windows Mobile 6.5, that same area has text that says lock. So here's a HTC HD2, and down there it says lock. 6.5.3 actually has a little icon. Another thing you can do in Windows Mobile 6.5.3 that you can't do in 6.5 is move around icons to anywhere on the screen. Whereas in 6.5, you could move them around, but you would have to tap and hold and do move to top or move down. There wasn't really anything else you could do. So this should have been the way 6.5 was off the bat, right? And this works in the settings screen or really any other place. Something else that's different in 6.5.3 is the notification area at the top of the screen. So if we tap up there, we get sort of this magnified view of icons that we can action on. And let's say we want to tap on the battery and we're taken to the battery application, and you get the point. And if there are too many uh, notifications up there, you can actually scroll to the right and scroll to the left. If it's five on the screen at one time. Let's go into email because there are some changes in the email application or Outlook Mobile as we know it very well by now. Something that's new is now we get a preview of the email, which is nice, underneath the sender. We also get threaded messaging. So here I've got an email with Malatesta. If I tap on his email, I get all of the different emails that I've had with him, sort of putting them all into one screen. And at the top, it says Mal's email. Very convenient. And as you can see, of all these graphical buttons are down here, and they all represent something different. They're a little bit cryptic, um, and, and they'll take some getting used to if this is indeed the final the final look of Windows Mobile 6.6. .6. But they do pretty much the same thing that you've come to expect. You just have to sort of memorize what they mean. And you can filter by different criteria up here. Right now it's filtered by conversation view, but of course you can go back to message type or from received subject and so on and so forth. Something that's also new is that the scroll bars on the right side of the screen are different. They're a little bit thicker, and we saw this a long time ago in 6.5.3, uh, but they're much more easy to grab than you would find in Windows Mobile 6.5. Let's get out of here and go into another application. Let's just go into the Alarms application to show something else. A lot of the user interface elements have been made bigger, such as the checkboxes, and also the drop-down list, much, much larger much better suited for a capacitive touchscreen display where you can't use the precision of a stylus. Okay, let's go out of this and go into another application. This time, let's go into Contacts. Okay, here in Contacts, there is an entirely new way to add Contacts. So again, we get these icons down here instead of text. And by the way, if you slide open the keyboard and look at this same screen in landscape, it looks really bad because these buttons get very spaced out and very ugly. Take a look. Yeah, so here they are, and there's just a bunch of random buttons scattered about. Anyhow, let's go into the Create a New Contact screen. We'll flip it back to Portrait, and we'll go to Outlook Contact. And this screen has been made much more finger-friendly compared to the other sort of database-looking uh, contact entry form. So we can add a telephone number by tapping here. We get a nice large pop-up. And by the way, all of the buttons have been changed to this larger style, rounded, Windows-esque style uh, of, of buttons. We can add an email address and so on and so forth. And it's much easier to add a, new, uh, add a picture for the person. We can swipe to the right to go to the next tab. And that's bringing up notes, so the keyboard just popped up. Then we can go to set ringtone, 
and you're back to where you started. So a nicer interface for adding context. And there's one more thing we want to show you in this version of Windows Mobile 6.5.3. Uh, Pocket Internet Explorer actually looks a little bit different, although strangely different. So if we go into uh, Internet Explorer Mobile, the buttons on the bottom have been sort of reconfigured. And right now there's a little error message. I'm going to click Cancel. And if you take a look, down here on the bottom, we have a Start Menu button. Why in the browser? I don't know. And we also have an X button. So let's take a look at how that looked in Windows Mobile 6.5, just as a comparison. OK, so here are the buttons in 6.5. Here they are in 6.5.3. Uh, there, now there's an extra X button, which does make sense. But there's also a Start Menu button, which is really strange. And it literally opens the Start Menu for some reason. So a lot of mysterious changes in Windows Mobile 6.5. We're really, at the end of the day, unsure what Microsoft is going to do at Mobile World Congress. But it's a good bet that they're going to release some evolution of Windows Mobile 6.5, possibly called 6.6 that will bring support for capacitive touchscreen displays and sort of buy them a little bit more time uh, before shipping, you know, the amazing Windows Mobile 7. We'll keep an eye on it. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for the latest on Windows Mobile 7, and Windows Mobile 6.6, .6, or whatever they're calling it, at twitter.com slash pocketnowtweets. That's it for now.